Hello YouTubers, it is I, Trollface the Man. Today I'm going to demonstrate a technique I had developed to grow rock candy crystals in just a matter of a few hours instead of the conventional several weeks. This technique is quite simple, but we will be working with a hot sugar liquid here, so this is only to be attempted by someone responsible and qualified to do it safely. That means if you are just a kid, don't try this without a parent or guardian supervision. Now that that is out of the way, we need to go over what we need. First thing we are going to need is a pot to cook the sugar solution in. We are also going to need a candy thermometer in order to determine the stage at which the sugar solution is cooking at. If we don't have one of these, it can be almost impossible to get this right. We are also going to want a measuring cup, sugar, of course, water, and a container to actually grow the crystals in. I am using a heat resistant plastic container but I would suggest using something like a canning jar as they are able to handle some high heat without risk of breaking. We also need something to grow the crystals on. I am using a piece of string and of course if you plan on eating your crystals you want to make sure it is clean and safe to eat off of and equally important to that is something to suspend the string off of. I am going to be using a pen for that. Other than that, so long as you have a controllable heat source and a spoon, you should be good to go. So step one, take your measuring cup and measure out roughly four cups of sugar and add it to the pot. As you can see, my sugar has clumped up and would be annoying to try and use it for normal baking means. So this is a perfect way to use it up. Secondly, you'll want to add in one cup of water. After that, you'll want to turn on your thermal range whatever it may be, to around medium-high. From here on out, we want to watch the sugar water solution very closely and mix it frequently as to assure it cannot burn or caramelize. Also, be sure to keep a good eye on your candy thermometer. If we bake it too short, it may take a really long time for your crystals to form. We bake it too long and your crystals may form so fast, you don't even have a chance to get in your seed strand before it turns into a solid block of sugar. Also, try and keep your thermometer from touching the bottom of your pot for the most accurate reading. So while that is cooking, let's see if we can't prepare what we're actually going to grow the crystals on. The key here is to make sure that we have the string placed where it is close to the bottom but not actually touching it. About an inch from it should be good. Once we get that marked, next we'll need to tie the string to the pen or whatever you may be using for your bridge. If you have excess string, you can either cut it off or like I did, wrap it around several times before tying it. And for now, we can set that back off to the side and continue cooking this. Now what we are doing is removing as much of the water out of the solution as possible, creating a super saturated solution. As time passes and as the solution cools, the sugar is forced out of it and crystallizes. It is essentially the same thing that happens when you let the sugar crystals grow over the course of weeks, except for that instead is using evaporation. Now the main difference is that even though we cook the solution and the concentration of sugar to water is way higher than the evaporated solution, the cooked solution doesn't instantly force out the sugar and have it crystallize. Why is that? Is it just from the heat? Well no, or not solely at least. It is true that the heat will allow for the sugar water solution to hold a higher concentration of sugar, but that isn't the only reason it stays liquid. What I mean is, the solution will take around 16 hours to harden fully, yet it cools off completely in around 3, depending on the container it is put in and how insulated it is. So even though it is cool, the sugar isn't forced out and crystallized right away. Well, this is because of a phenomenon called supercooling, or at least in part. Cool? What does that have to do with a hot solution? Well, let's first look at what exactly supercooling is. It is a phenomenon when a liquid or gas does not turn into a solid even after being cooled past its freezing point. Now, a freezing point is not necessarily cold as many people like to believe. A freezing point is just a temperature in which something turns solid. That does not mean it is cold in the least bit. Well, at least not based by our perspective. For example, the freezing point of iron is 2,799 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Touch that temperature with your bare skin, and I can assure you that frostbite will be your last concern. So with that in mind, let us understand that just because the sugar is a hot or warm solution does not mean it can't be super cooled. Once again, it is all based off of perspective. So the reason the solution takes so long to form crystals and doesn't turn into a solid block while it's cooking has to do with a few factors. One, even though we have cooked out enough water that the crystals can form and should start to form, they don't due to the supercooling phenomenon in which the crystals can't form without a nucleus to grow on. And two, sucrose, otherwise known as sugar, takes a certain period of time to actually form crystals depending on their crystal structure. So, the stuff will stay liquid for a time until it finds something to nuclei off of. This could be a speck of dust, a scratch in the container, or any number of impurities. The rougher they are though, the better. But the smaller the imperfection, the longer it will take the crystals to grow as there is reduced surface area. So how we stimulate the crystals to grow is using something called seed crystals, or in our case, a strand of seed crystals. This will provide a nuclei point for our supercooled solution to allow the crystals to start growing, and by doing this, help limit it from growing on the walls of the container instead of the string. If you want to see a more dramatic demonstration of a supercooled solution, look up sodium acetate, otherwise known as a hot ice demonstration. So now that the long-winded science exclamation is over, let's continue to bake our sugar solution. If the sugar starts to bubble up like this, don't panic, it is alright. Just make sure that you dial down the heat a bit to ensure it doesn't bubble over the sides of your pan and make a big mess. After a few minutes pass and we're about to reach the syrup stage, my pot is starting to bubble up again. And as you can see, they are a lot thicker now. Notice though, now when the bubbles break, my solution has become clear. That means the sugar has now fully dissolved. Looking at my thermometer, we have reached the syrup stage, so we can now turn down the heat and let it sit until it cools to around 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we can add in flavorings, coloring, or transfer it to the growth container. While that is cooling, we can prepare the seed crystal strand. This is simple. I'll just take the string I had prepared prior and dip it into the sugar syrup. You might have to use a spoon or something to really get it to coat it. After that, take the string and coat it using some granulated sugar. This sugar will act as our nucleation point. Now that that has been done and my syrup has cooled, I'm going to add in a dash of vanilla flavoring. Now you can use any number of flavorings and colors, but I'm just going to stick with vanilla for this demonstration. Once that has been done, if you are going to do it, you can now transfer the syrup to your growth container. This is the part you need to be most careful during. You do not want to spill any or make a mess, but at the same time, you do not want to get this stuff on your skin. I mean, it's not called confectioner's napalm for no reason. When you successfully do this, you can now add your seed strand. It might try to float in which you should be able to rise it up and down a few times to straighten it out. When that has been completed, now possibly the hardest part comes up, waiting for your sweet treat to grow. I'm going to leave this for four hours, but you can wait more or less depending on how big or small you want your treats to be. Make sure you don't leave it sitting for too long though, as if you do, you might come back to a block of sugar instead of a crystal strand. All right, I'm now switching over to time lapse.
So now that it has been given sufficient time to grow, I am just going to pull it out of the solution. If the crystal does not want to come out easily, you might have to get a spoon in there by the side and try to wiggle it a little to free the crystal strand. Luckily mine came out fairly easily. As you can see though, it is thick with syrup. But all we have to do is hang it up in another container and let the excess syrup drip off of it. When it is done, it should look something like this. Now you can see it here next to a quarter for size comparison. Not bad at all for four hours of growth. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. And if you enjoy the video, please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. On one last note, don't leave the excess syrup around to harden. Otherwise, you might have a sugar brick left in your container. It can be cleaned out with hot water, but it is a major hassle and best to avoid. Thanks again for watching guys and bye!